Hello everyone, and welcome to a new video. This is Octopath Traveler, which has recently been released on Steam, and so I can play it. Um, I'm generally quite a fan of large RPGs, and I um, enjoy turn-based combat. The story of the game that I've seen so far is very anime, so I guess anime warning to anyone who is offended by that sort of thing. It's a bit annoying, but the bits I've seen were still bearable. Um, I've only played about three hours, maybe? So the concept of the game seems to be quite interesting. Um, not so sure about the balancing, but you know, we'll see, we'll get into it. And um, yeah, let's start a new game. So the way it works is we have multiple characters to choose from. Uh, eight in total, hence the name, of course. And I believe that we start with one. Well, I know we start with one, and then we can meet the others. Um, not sure exactly how that will play out in the long run, but um, I'm not sure if we can get all eight of them in, in the party, or if, it's, if there's a limit. You know, I seem to recall that there was a limit, but I, I really don't know. Um, so we, here we have Primrose, who is a dancer. Um, and yeah, if you like, you can pause to read their backstories, but we'll get to see the backstories anyway, so it's not directly relevant. Um, here we've got, I guess, a standard warrior type. Um, Tressa, a merchant. We have Cyrus, a mage type character. Um, we have Ophelia, um, she does kind of cleric stuff, so healing and light magic, I guess. Um, we have Hanit, a hunter, bow user, capturing wild monsters and all that stuff. Um, we have Therion, who is apparently a thief. And we have Elfin, who I guess he's a, like an alchemist or something like that. Um, I am going to start with a story I already know, though, which is um, Hunt. So let's go. The hunt is on. She speaks a bit weird. Don't don't worry about it. I'm not going to read this out, so if you uh, if you want to read it, I'll give you enough time to pause it, basically. Good. Thou hast yet to depart. Waylaid by sentiment, my girl. It did ill behooven me to leave without bidding my favorite Prentice affair thee well. A joke, as always. Will thy journey be long, Master? Ah, uh, a good question, that. The request cometh from none other than the Knights Ardant. The hunt will take us to distant lands, and the beast we pursue in is a fearsome one. Um, so just a quick throw in line story dialogue is partially voice acted. Some of it is just the, the dialogue boxes though. One thing that I really don't like that they've done is that um, when they don't have the full voice acting for the dialogue, they still start by doing a quick sort of two or three words kind of thing. Just a random standard sentence, I guess. They got the voice actors to say a bunch of stuff like thank you, yes, no, stop there. And um, they will always play like a bit that kind of fits to the general dialogue, and then you have to read the rest of it. Kind of, it's it's really kind of annoying because it's not fully voice acted, but it's still not quiet, so you can't talk over it. It's just a bit tedious, but yeah, we'll we'll have to deal with that. I see. Ha ha ha! Look and not so glum, girl. I'm no Tyro with green arrows and bruises on his bow arm. 
I'll do the deed and be back before two moons have passed. Still no smile? What is it, my girl? Tis not the hunt that concerneth me. Thou intendest to stop and off somewhere along the way. Oh, here and there, mayhap. Why dost thou ask? Thou forgettest or feignst ignorance, so I will remind thee. On the last hunt, thou gambledest away thy purse and came back a poorer man than thou left. Poorer in coin, mayhap. Yes, I did make a few wagers at the arena in Victor's Hollow. And learned that while I have a keen eye for assessing the strength of beasts, I am quite at a loss with men. A valuable lesson that was cheaply bought. Not so cheap in the end. Eliza had to pay him thy debts, and thou only finished its paying her back this last moon. Promise in me, master. No more foolish gambling. <laughs> but what of the old hunters saying? If the first arrow faileth, knock a second and try again. Thou just madest that one up. Come now, girl. Thou art too young by half for such world-weary sighs. Must thou makest our parting so gloomy? I turn to thee, Hagen. Look in after, Master, for he can rarely be bothered to look in after himself. takest her side against me, old friend? He knoweth good sense when he heareth it. <laughs> Growlest thou not at me, thou faithless turncoat? Hail, Hanit. Have you come to see us off? I have come in to warn Master about straying from the path. And I thank you for it. I do not have the leaves to pay another debt like that. Have I not a single ally in this infernal village? I am your friend, but I am also a knight Ardant, and your client. You would do well not to forget this. Not for a moment. Most honorable lady Eliza of the illustrious Knights Ardant. <laughs> That's more like it. Fear not. I'll keep him out of trouble. I'll have him fill his evenings penning a detailed account of our adventures on the hunt. Taken care, and may thine arrows strike true. I shall look after the forest till the day of thy return. Thank thee, my girl. And farewell. A year hath passed since that day. In all that time, Master could only be bothered to send in a single letter. Hanet, tis me thou revered Master. Missest me? I won't bore thee with any blather about the weather or the season. Who knoweth when this will even arrive, after all? For three months now, I have pursued the trail of the beast sought me by the Knights Ardant. A beast by the name of Red Eye. That's their name for it, leastwise. As for its true name, if it even hath one, none can say. But on my father's bow, I swear, tis the most vexing quarry I've ever had the misfortune to hunt in. It eludeth mine every trap, and though thou may think it me mad for saying this, I swear it can even senseth every move I make. 
I know not if it is human intelligence or pure animal instinct, but either way, it refuseth to be caught. Still, we appear to have annoyed it sufficiently that it is moving on to new pastures. Judging from its behavior, I believe it meaneth to make for the lands around Stoneguard. I will be frank with thee, my girl, for thou hast always been able to see through my pretenses. The chase will be hard, and the hunt will not endeth soon. But fear not, for endeth it shall. Hast thou ever known'st your master to fail in the hunt? And so I ask thee, my dear apprentice, pray look after the village until I return. Oh, and be not a worry, Wart. Always thy friend and teacher, Zanta. Never heard master admitteth that any hunt would be difficult. Either this red eye is truly the most formidable of beasts, or he stoppeth in every gambler's den from here to Stoneguard. But no, Master liketh to act in the fool, but when it cometh to hunting, if he saith he will catcheth his quarry, then catcheth it he will. <sighs> Yes, Linda, I know. Master entrusted the safety of the village to me. My duty now is to the villagers. Come in. Let him us visit in the headman and see if anyone hath need of my bow. Um, okay, so we basically, they call it the radar, but it's a mini-map at the um, bottom right. I can turn it off using RB, but I don't really see why I would, so there's a mini-map. Um, current goal marked in green, side quests I guess marked in orange, and that marking just above me right now on the mini-map is a, um, yeah, an area transition. Um, I don't think the minimap does a very good job conveying that I'm the thing moving. It always seems to look like everything around me is moving in the minimap. But yeah, it, you get used to it. Um, so wow, that was almost well over 10 minutes of just introduction cutscene stuff. Um, so here, here we have an inn. Um, basically, we can rest here uh, or exit. Uh, resting does what it does in every other RPG. You um, get your health and um, MP restored. I think I call it SP in this game. Same difference. Um, we'll also find these chests quite commonly around the world. Um, for example, this one contained a healing grape. And there's another one here with an inspiriting plum. That's MP regeneration. Here we have a, I don't know, bar, restaurant, whatever. Um, some houses you can go in inside, like that one. Uh, the shops and such, generally you just talk to the door and you get the um, the menu. And characters with these ellipses over their head, you can talk to. Hello! <laughs> and this is what I mean about the, um, the dialogue thing. It's not fully voice acted, but still... Hello. Every line, you get some kind of voice acting that sort of fits the line, but it's just a one or two word throwaway thing. Um, and not a proper dialogue. And I will probably talk over that quite a bit. Good day. But it goes against my instinct to talk over voice acting, so it's a bit annoying. This is the general store. Here we can buy just a bunch of stuff. In some towns, this would be split up between um, different kinds of store. There might be a weapon store, an armor store, and a consumable store, or stuff like that. But generally speaking, it's um, yeah. In some form or another, you get shops in most cities. This is a safe point. 
I'm going to override my old safe. Fair and well. And as always, I'm not going to read out the dialogues because I'm not a voice actor, so that would sound pretty stupid. Um, but yeah, if you want to read them, then you can just pause. I will definitely leave them up long enough for that. <coughs> I am haunted. So here, this is not voice acted. It's story dialogue, but it's not voice acted. And instead of saying Hetman, how my, my, she just basically said her name. I don't know. I guess they needed to justify paying voice actors or something, but I really don't like that particular uh, solution to not voice acting the entire dialogue. Hello. I see. Hmm. <laughs> I'm asking ye. Yes. So this introduces us to path actions, which is a unique ability that each character has, depending on yeah, sort of background and class, I guess. Um, so, for example, in uh, in the case of the Huntress, Harnit, I can provoke people into fighting me with beasts. And we'll see what that looks like now. So, uh, I always get this confirmation dialogue, which is, again, really handled weirdly. I guess it's because it's a pretty bad Wii port. Um, or switch, yeah, switch port. Um, instead of immediately going to one of the actions, by default nothing is selected, so you always have to go up or down depending on what you want to do. Instead of just saying, you know, you hit A, you confirm, you hit B, you deny or something, you just always have to actually end up selecting one or the other. It's, it's more inputs than are necessary, and other RPGs have definitely handled this um, significantly better. But yeah, we're going to provoke this hunter. Let us begin. And in Let this sort of um, sort of fight, instead of getting your full abilities, you only get the free defend item and summon beast options. Now we'll see that um, we we'll get more options later on. But in these provoke fights, the idea is that we fight with beasts that we've captured. Um, so we start out with a mossy meep for health restoration, a forest fox that has a blinding attack. The blinding chance seems to be quite low, maybe 10 to 20% from my experience, so it doesn't really happen that often. And these two have a limited number of uses. So beasts we catch in the wild have a certain amount of times so we can summon them and then they're basically gone. They leave, I guess. Um, we also have Lind who is the big cat that's our permanent companion. And there's no limit on how often we can summon Lind. Now, the combat system has a feature where enemies are vulnerable to certain elements, um, which we don't know by default which those are. We can see that this guy has a vulnerability to um, sword attacks, so that's what the sword icon underneath the character indicates. And there are three question marks next to it, which indicates that he has three other vulnerabilities that we don't know. Um, if we hit him with that kind of attack, we would find out. But of course, right now all we have is a forest fox, which also does a sword attack. Um, now, Linda can also do a pounce, which would be a pole armor attack. So we might be able to see that he's weak to a um, pole armor attack as well. And now we can what see next? that the enemy also has a shield next to his name. So a one in that blue shield icon. And if he is a hit with an attack that he's vulnerable to, then the shield counter will go down by one. And he'll get broken. 
So you get this break text. Um, of course, this fight was way too short to make it matter, but... Um, Now then, so. Oh. So when you break an enemy, basically their turn gets cancelled and they are kind of staggered for a bit. Um, it's a bit like the stagger mechanic from from Final Fantasy XIII, maybe. Um, not identical, but the idea is if you hit them a lot with hunting. attacks that um, they're vulnerable to, the then beginning. you can get them into a state where they take increased damage for a bit, and you can also skip one of their turns. So right now, if you can see the turn order up above, it is my character first, and then the, um, the hunter. Now that I've broken him, he doesn't get his turn. What next? So basically, I get to um, get to attack again for free once. And he also takes additional damage when he's in that broken state. Let in my arrow f so you see that was 107 damage, he took 166 Thou when he was uh, when he was broken. So I'm not sure exactly what the numbers on that are, but you do bonus damage to enemies that are um, are in that break state. Well uh, yep. Excellent. Um. No, get the story. Hello there. Huntress Hunter. Yes, that's me. Hmm. Um. Well. Understood. That's. Hmm. Greeting. Hmm. I see. Hmm. Hmm. I'm asking ye. <laughs> Splendid. I am ready. I'm asking ye. Fair. Well met. Nay. Eh. Mm. Yes. This bodeth ill. Well, actually... Truly? I am ready. Okay, so at this point we um, have gotten a task to hunt a beast that has apparently strayed from its usual surroundings, whatever. Um, I won't be talking during the dialogues, but I'll not be reading them out either. Um, I think that's probably a good solution. That way if you don't care about the dialogues or you already know them, 
um, you can just kind of hit forward a bit and um, you won't be missing any of my commentary, really. I think that's that's a good way to handle that. Um, if YouTube still had annotations, I would basically provide you with skip dialogue buttons, but I don't think it does. Um, you get like info cards, but I don't think they do the same thing. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll, I'll look into that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to end this first episode here. Um, let me know what you think, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.